Hi. Welcome back to Volumes. Uh, my name is Tom Gibson. I'm joined with Lucy Cunningham, and we're creating a little episode because we want to just kind of update ourselves. Basically, we want to look back at this and be like, "This is what we're doing at this point in our lives." We feel we feel in a very philosophical mood today, yeah. so we I mean, thought we might hone yeah. in on that and actually do something with those thoughts and not just send them out into the universe without any receptors. That was I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> Perfect. Capturing um, the thoughts. So today is uh, Monday, twenty first of September, twenty twenty. We're uh, in in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, it's uh, not that bad actually. I expected it to be kind of worse. Yeah. Seems and for like it's being not on the brink of war as well, it's yeah. also um, pretty calm. <laughs> um, I mean, kind of exciting. Oh my god, nah. It's, it's bad, okay? I'm going to be honest. People have died and it's tragic. Mm-hmm. But not as many people as many other things that do exist and kill people. Yep. That's my uh, perspective on this situation. Yeah. It seems like it has to be blown out of proportion. There has to be something going on, a bit sneaky. It doesn't make much sense. Like, why? I Well, I think it's there? easy for us to say that. Like, we are in a point of privilege where we don't really know anyone that's been affected. But I don't even, know... Even the stats, even the statistics yeah, well, don't say... Like, see if they said it's the highest killer mm-hmm. ever. Mm-hmm. I'd be like, whoa. Yeah. Okay, th- this is serious. Yep. Maybe we should be doing everything that they're telling us to do yep. and whatever. But it's not even the, the worst. It's not... Mm-hmm. And, and I'm getting this information directly from a doctor that I know mm-hmm. who has informed me that... This isn't even the worst virus that's ever existed. Yeah. It, or, or even the worst virus that exists right now. Yeah, which is crazy. So my mum works in the hospital labs and they've been testing for COVID samples or they've been testing COVID samples. And she is by no means a conspiracist at all. But she is convinced that this is not what we're being told it is and that the statistics are way out of line. So if like someone is killed in a car crash that had symptoms of COVID three weeks prior, it's being regarded as a COVID death. That's ridiculous. So uh, like unless it's really, really poor judgment of the facts and statistics or the people dealing with those and publishing those, um, unless that is the case, which is highly unlikely because these people are professionals, you know, then they're trying to obscure the facts. They're trying to make this seem scarier than it is, which doesn't doesn't take away from the fact that people are dying because yeah, of it. Yeah, That's terrible. Yeah. Um, Our point isn't that people aren't dying, but the, the, it's that it's blown out of proportion. Yeah, and they're they're tearing down the daily routine and the daily yeah. working of things, and it it just doesn't really it doesn't fit the bill. It doesn't. Yeah seem like nothing's really adding up a measure that needs to be taken and it's not like we're some crazy conspiracy theorists or nothing no. it's everyone's saying this well everyone i'm a crazy conspiracy theorist mm, but. okay <laughs> i'm i'm completely <laughs> rational and i mostly just don't really care yeah i, I want to just live life yeah my mom business i want to go places and do things i mean okay so me and lucy were supposed to be in spain right now um yep living in spain um uh, but we we can't go because it's against the fco yeah fco uh, advice which is some i don't know what it stands for it's a di- board of directors or whatever that yeah. say nope can't travel it's dangerous yeah. you might die or whatever or you might spread um but, but technically we would have been able to go but my university are telling yes. me that i'm not allowed to go yeah so so we're going for lucy's uh third year in university yeah. where she has to fourth go fourth year fourth, university right? yeah. <laughs> um where she has to go teach uh english in a english to, to yeah to spanish yeah. kids <laughs> um which a lot of students have went they, they went yeah to a lot spain of spain and other yeah, places a lot of students have just been told just get your own yeah. insurance and, and, and they've even yeah they've even went to the exact city yep. in which we'd have went to mm-hmm. um but we're not getting to go because our university is in yeah. also not throwing any shade i mean i respect the university's decisions mm-hmm. to, like i mean they don't want to be responsible for like a student passing away or whatever yeah no biggie i'm just saying that's where we, we should have been yeah but because of like this 
full the complicated situation. Yeah, like <laughs> the FCO saying you can't go, but really yeah. there's no reason we can't go. There's no good reason why we can't go because there is there's much worse. There's yeah, diseases I was say, and viruses out there. There's also there's worse things to be complaining about, you know? Like we could like I don't want to sound spoiled by being like I'm not allowed to go to Spain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the worst thing that's ever happened. But it is strange. You can't you can't deny the fact that it's strange for people yeah. to suddenly have no freedom. I mean, we're told yeah. in this country that we are free. People have this idea that we're so free in this country. We're not under a dictatorship. We choose our politicians. Choose and um, <laughs> and what you call that marks. in quotation marks. Um, yeah, we're given this idea that we are free, but now we're kind of it's becoming more aware to us that we are controlled and other people like people higher up than us do have say in how we live our lives yeah i, I totally agree with yeah. that um i mean yeah we're, we're, what is what is i don't want to get too philosophical too on deep, this, too what is like what is the purpose of a government what are they trying to do <laughs> is it because I always think, right, I mean, I, I can't be the only one to think this, and it's quite a basic idea, but mm-hmm. you could apply it to anything that government does, anything that politicians do, and it's that if they're here to create the rules, yeah, where does that, where do they draw the line of creating rules? So, like, yeah, you're not supposed to murder, but do people need told, do people need told <laughs> they're not allowed to murder? Like, if I was told, Tom, you're not supposed to murder, I was never inclined to murder anyway. And someone that is probably is going to murder regardless because people still kill people. Do you know what I mean? Do, does the idea of going to jail I, really I stop people from murdering? It definitely deters a fair amount of people really from, from acting on a whim. Definitely. I don't know. I'm on the fence about that. <laughs> uh, Human behaviour is so sporadic, so it's, it's hard to tell what would happen if there wasn't kind of like a... Um, what like a, a, some sort of like repercussion for yeah, what yeah 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 i get uh, what you mean but i don't know or some I mean, sort of entity that kind of looms over us and has this idea of authority i mean yeah. people respond more to authority than we we believe we do than oh we no I, I totally agree that people yeah. respond to authority but i think people respond to authority because we are instinctively uh passive and then there's instinctively there are some leaders yeah there are like the alphas that take control and then there's the people that follow Mm -hmm. but what i mean is that when there's someone who who is willing to murder they're willing to murder regardless if the alpha tells them not to definitely you know yeah i mean i think it's like power is such a strange thing in this world because in the grand scheme of things i feel like we talk about this all the time but in the grand scheme of things, we're all just little animals just chilling yeah. on this big... Big old rock. Big rock. I know. <laughs> it's like those memes where it's like the little uh, the little guy sitting in the slug. Me going to uh, work <laughs> and doing all my little silly things. Like, <laughs> That's exactly we what are. life we're is. Just, we're just little <laughs> creatures doing our own stuff. And it's crazy to think that we can be told where we can and can't go yeah. on this like just we're all living here and we can't go to another country without crossing borders and having a little card that tells us yeah. that we're a national of this country yeah. and we're not allowed to i don't know like well i guess we are allowed to walk through fields in this country but you're not allowed to go within however much distance of the house and it's just it's a strange idea that someone can tell us what we can and can't do yeah um i mean i'm i absolutely agree with the idea that we're, we should question everything yeah. everything we should always question we yeah. should always be skeptical yep. um and we, and we should always like keep our eyes open and and pay attention to what's going on i mean not for any re like i think that it can uh we can push it and then you become paranoid yeah you don't but need to be blind blind's belief is scarier to me than it's paranoia to me as well, yeah. <laughs> i mean the reason it's scary to me is because I don't like we live quite a perfect life if yeah. you think about it. Most people do. Yeah. We we most people have quite a comfortable situation going on in the UK. I mean, a lot of people don't. I'm not trying to like uh, dismiss that. I'm just saying that a lot of people are all right mm-hmm. and are are quite content. Yeah. But I don't think it's always going to be like that because I think that if anything does happen 
they don't the, the people that have the power the people that have control don't care about us and mm-hmm. won't won't care about us yeah. in that situation it's like during uh, the cold war how they built all the fallout shelters they didn't build them so that they could they could uh, house everyone mm-hmm. in safety they just could house those in power yeah like the queen and all their homies yep. and the politicians and all their homies mm-hmm. and that was about it and yeah. all the aristocrats and all the millionaires and whatever but everyone else they just died if that happened yeah um so the reason i say stay like quite question everything is because even though we're in comfort right now and we think oh they're actually they're doing a good job because they're looking after us they're not looking at looking out for us in the long run because if anything does change like something like coronavirus is mm-hmm. a perfect example they didn't really look out for us they were like ah we don't really know what to do uh uh but we're gonna pretend we know what we're doing uh, uh and everyone's gonna probably like a yeah. bunch of people are gonna die when we could have prevented it and we're gonna ruin our economy that we didn't have to ruin and stuff like that the problem was that everyone was waiting on everyone else to act yeah. so that they could follow suit and britain was one of the worst in doing so because yeah. we just stood back and kind of clapped our hands and we're like oh this is this is rubbish like we'll just wait and see what you guys do yeah and they just didn't choose the right path because we were talking about this earlier so like sweden they'd never really had a proper lockdown or anything and they've had two spikes which yeah they're spikes but now they're absolutely fine yeah and they're they've got very little cases in the whole country because they think they've acquired herd immunity but We were told that if we went down that path, thousands would die. Thousands have died. Thousands, thousands have died and they're still dying because yeah. we've not got herd immunity and they're still talking about closing down um, hotels and yeah. pubs and restaurants and stuff again. I, see, that's what, that also like, it's it seems dr- so it's confusing. It's drawing it out. It's, it's so confusing that you could go, right, we're going to go into this period of lockdown, which is fair enough, right? Mm-hmm. If that is what they thought at the time was the good like way of coping with it, yeah. I guess fair enough. It is quite strange that they can just demand that everyone just yeah. remains indoors from now on. Yeah. But yeah, we, we all go in lockdown and then we come out of lockdown and we think, okay, is it normal now? And they're like, right, we're going to open some stuff. Yeah. We're going to let people interact to some degree. And then a little bit more and a little bit more. And then you go back in a lockdown and then you come out, but then we're in, a, we're in lockdown right now. Mm-hmm. But we're also allowed to go to like the pub and the shops. We're yeah. allowed to go to anywhere there's a till, mm-hmm. anywhere that you, like the government and and anywhere that boosts the economy is what I mean. Mm-hmm. But you can't like I theoretically I couldn't go to my grand's house, mm-hmm. but I I could meet my gran at the pub. Yeah, <laughs> like it doesn't make much sense. Yeah. Like w- w- what are we actually doing? It now? just feels like we're stuck in the middle. Of- like are we trying to prevent a virus? Are we trying to prevent I think the we're trying of an to, economy? I think we're trying to live life normally while also taking measures. So, like, we can live with the virus instead of actually focusing on just eradicating it or this getting herd immunity. worthwhile. I, I understand the, the complication. Like, it's almost like um, they're stuck between deciding to essentially allow lots of people to die in order for us to come out better on the other side or trying to do everything they can but they're not they're not trying to they're not doing everything that they can to actually phase it out you know yeah um so yeah those are like the two extremes they draw it out forever and they kill not as many like so people are still dying but yeah it's not as many as would be dying during a spike but it will amount to more yeah but what is the more compassionate route it's hard to it's hard to decide which is the yeah. best route well yeah i i yeah you're probably right on the, the idea that For, if we were more compassionate we probably actually would be in a better p- position would altogether. we but i feel like they're taking the more oh we're being compassionate route. yeah no, Sweden, they're, they're, they've taken a more rational approach mm. and they've thought just get it over and done with but then it is cold-hearted and lots, lots of people probably died i but mean not even in the term of like coronavirus mm. i mean in life yeah if government was there to be compassionate and care for one another yeah then we'd probably be in a better position yeah if it wasn't all how do we make money how do we help like like create a system that makes money yeah. how do we like benefit from this and that and mm-hmm. all those and it was just how do you help your neighbor mm-hmm. how do you create community how do you yeah. look after one another they would probably be in a better position but that doesn't really exist anymore here um and also i guess this 
kind of comes back to the idea of like if you tell someone to murder would that prevent them to, from murdering even mm-hmm. if they were inclined to murder anyway like the people who are going to wear masks are going to wear masks they didn't need told or like it didn't need to become like a law or what I guess mm-hmm. it's not a law but it didn't need to be enforced that thoroughly to wear a mask the thing I is, didn't mind like, wearing a mask see, I would have been willing to wear a mask I don't feel inclined to kill people I'm not going to kill people it's a little different I think though because there is obviously this judicial like system set up and it's a law because when someone does murder they don't want them to just be back in society and be at risk of murdering more people there needs to be a law in place in order for them to be incarcerated or do you think that they just shouldn't they should just be allowed to roam free and kill people no no i mean there's no consequence you're right i get what you're saying but I, i mean i'm i don't have the answers for a perfect economic system and a perfect political system mm. and a perfect yeah, yeah. system altogether yeah. but i think maybe like if if i don't know if there was a town worth of people mm-hmm. right yeah just, I, just for the ease of yeah, the conversation yeah. 100 say, people yeah say the right? whole population of the earth was just these hundred yeah people. hundred people right yeah if one guy started killing people yeah killed a couple people right yeah. so now we're two people down and one of those like 98 people surviving as a murderer and we know what it is we're gonna be like right here like here jim jim you need to stop killing people like you, you're gonna no, you're gonna have to stop that right happen. and and i mean like you've killed two people like we're gonna we're gonna lock you up God for a bit damn it, Jim. right we're gonna lock you up we're going to teach you why this is really bad because there's only a hundred of us mm. and we need to work hard because there's stuff out there that's want to kill us as well. Some so, people can't be told. What right, okay, so then he still acts out of place. Yeah. Just, we just kill him. Uh, that's what you I was going to say. Him. These people would definitely just kill you just him. beat him up and kill him. But, but is that, in a much is that more bad? diplomatic society. No, I think... What if... What if I would no, say no, we're no, in no, a, listen, a less sympathetic What if someone society? had framed Jim and then we killed Jim? You know, like there, there needs to be. But people do a, frame people, and people do end up in jail for life for murder and things like that. And, and the they system can, we live they in, they can now. appeal and they can get out. It's just. But then why the can risk, we not the risk appeal is very and, high. and get out in my system and my hypothetical system? What get out of the afterlife? Like no, no, get out of <laughs> of. I mean, I, I'm not saying we should scrap jails. I'm just saying that it doesn't need to be one guy in a courtroom that decides the fate of one person. Mm could be the full collective of the no, population it could be that 100 people that decide that's what's going on this is this and is very hypothetical in an ideal world um, there would be an answer to the debate but there's not so it's just discussion for now yeah also i'm i'm surprised on your perspective on this oh, really? because usually you're like very uh how do we how do we make sure everyone has the best possible opportunity yeah. but then you're like where was it sweden mm-hmm you're like, yeah, Sweden did it right. The very logical approach, to which wasn't that sympathetic and was okay with... Well, yeah, but the with, with the hindsight, good. with hindsight, it's going to harm less people. I know, I'm not saying that I side with one way or the other. I understand the conflict. I right. understand... Just for talking sake, you're Yeah, yeah. Up. Fair enough. Okay. There is two two sides to it. Um. Well, we really jumped in uh, deep on that. I know, and I didn't even want to mention coronavirus. I, I did not All we keep talking, everyone keeps talking about coronavirus. I'm so Fed bored of it. I just want to get on with my life. Anyway, let's go on to a more important subject that's very related, yes. and it's that we shouldn't trust the government. Yeah. Um. I bought a book the other day. Um. And I kind of want to talk about it. It's by John Wright. I'm not sure who he is, but I looked into him a little bit. Uh. It just seems like a cool guy. I'd love to meet him. Talk to him. Um, But he wrote this book and it's called The Forager's Calendar, I recommend it, A Seasonal Guide to Nature's Wild Harvests. And I've been reading this um, and it's basically a book about how you can go and pick nature's good foods straight out of the ground, straight off the bush, straight off the tree. uh, And you can turn them into teas or you can put them in your your meals or you could just eat them raw mm-hmm. and it's awesome and i love that perspective to have i love that idea um and i think also so does lucy i'm not like yep <laughs> I do. um and i've been thinking a lot about how connected we are in all the wrong ways so like if we only have maybe like 10 ways of connecting right mm-hmm. i feel like almost all 10 of those are consumed by things that are related to 
uh, policies, like the government. It's mm-hmm. so, like we're connected because they're allowed to keep tabs on us because they we have passports, we have uh, national insurance numbers, and all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the other part of that is that we're all connected due to our phones, mm-hmm. right? But I think that obviously there isn't like a, a finite amount of connectedness we can have. But mm. it, I think that there probably, maybe there is actually, I think there maybe is to some people, like it, it is hard to constantly stay connected. But I think if there is only 10, we should stay connected to nature. We should stay connected to one another. Mm-hmm. And we should, I mean, I'm, I'm, constantly connected to my phone and mm. this podcast wouldn't exist without my phone so like mm. i love my phone but I'm, i would rather just i feel like almost all 10 of my connectedness points are to my phone mm-hmm. and i need to get off my phone yeah i need one on my phone and i need one picking berries and staying connected with nature and becoming yeah. one with the world around me and i need one with the people i love and love spending time with you know what i mean mm-hmm it's very um, very hard to rewire your brain to not need those constant yeah. hits of dopamine from yeah. your phone. Constant There's hits of dopamine. Much more behind it. They're than minute we think. hits of dopamine. Though. They're not well, real. Yeah, They're not satisfactory. It's like watching TV. I mean, like that sounds like a ridiculous thing to say, but I really, I mean, you know what it's like though when you're choosing between pastimes. You can read a book which makes you feel good, but over like a sustained, it was it's like a sustained um, dopamine hit. But with your phone, you're constantly getting new yeah. stimulus. And it's like, I always feel myself drawn to just go on my phone. Do you know what? I, I think... Scary. That, so my my thing isn't that I actually dislike phones. Mm-hmm. It's I dislike the consequences of yeah. phones. After reading a book, you don't... you I, I've never personally felt like, I need to read another book. I need. To, I'm, I'm yeah. craving another book. Or like, uh-huh. do you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Like, I don't feel I need to like pick up every book I see. Yeah, I'm just finished reading that book, and uh-huh. I think about it. I contemplate it. I, I I digest what I've read. But with my phone, every time I put my phone down, all I want to do is pick my phone back yeah. up. Like and that's the yeah. problem. I think the problem with it for me, one is time wasting. I could be doing productive things and actually yeah. bettering myself in yeah. life, but instead I'm flicking through stuff, and I also dislike that. Not that it's always a bad thing, but that it's... How do I say this? Like, it's not challenging your brain in any yeah. way. Your brain is almost, like, sitting there drooling because it's just, it like, is. engrossed in stupid it's stuff. M- it's really You're, you're really not um, stimulating your brain no. at all. Whereas reading a book, going a walk, like, yeah. I, f- I see them all as very healthy things for the mind, but... They are. I agree. They must yeah. be. They must be. I mean... That again, this is where I sort of like, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm overly pushing the agenda of like I hate my phone, but because mm-hmm. I, I do love my phone. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm trying to learn Spanish on my phone. I'm not doing very well. I, I couldn't <laughs> like I like what other? There's no physical application or a physical thing that exists like Duolingo where I can. Well, learn. you can go get lessons. <laughs> I could go get lessons, yeah, but I mean the ease. I mean it's free. And they make money because they've got ads. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, it's quite a good system. Yeah. You know what I mean? In those ways, it's time saving rather than time exactly. consuming. That's the way it should be. Yeah. That's exactly what I was going to get at. Like, yeah. the it's idea that... It's a tool, not a... Um, it shouldn't hinder life. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yep. It sh- it's it a tool. It should take yeah. up time. It, it should. Like, yeah. Qu- you're, yeah. You're right. It's a tool. It's a yeah. tool. You, you shouldn't, like, use it for anything other than a tool. Yeah. Um, maybe on occasion, an, an entertainment device. Mm-hmm. But I would say primarily it should be yeah. a tool. It should be there. Should just assist, like... Yeah, for needing to know the time. It mm-hmm. should be there for tracking a workout. It should be there for yep. figuring out, like, where you're going. Mm-hmm. Or it should be, like, uh, if you're like, oh, what are you doing tomorrow? I can check my calendar. That's all it should be. It mm-hmm. shouldn't be, oh, I've got five minutes to waste... I'm going to take my phone out. Yeah. I, I could make those five minutes really productive. Yep. I could read a few more pages of the book or I could mm-hmm. write down an idea that I've had or, or been thinking about. I could plan out my day or I could do anything. I could meditate five minutes. Five yeah. minutes is a huge amount of time if you think about it. You could do so much in five minutes mm-hmm. and every day is made up of so many five minutes. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I need to stop using my phone every five minutes. I think like lots of opportunities can come from the virtual world and like people are making great successes through it 
but think of all the physical opportunities that we would have if we were just present in real life like we could yeah we could talk to someone on the internet but imagine like it's like that way where you can talk to someone over a messenger messengers or like whatever but if you talk to them in real life it's got very different a very different significance you know so like if you emailed an employer asking for a job it would be different than if you showed up with it's do you know how like they've stopped um taking in physical cvs CVs, you're only allowed to email them but you were always told oh well like maybe five years ago I remember when I was applying for jobs when I was younger my mum would say well either email with them with the CV but then take it in because it shows and it makes an impression you know Mm -hmm. there's just very different function if you meet or speak to someone in real life yeah yeah I agree both things pose opportunities but yeah real life opportunities I guess are well I I think they're more significant they, they absolutely are. Yeah. Like, I don't want to go on, like, a side tangent here, but um, the the full reason for why they don't want paper CVs, they keep mm-hmm. saying, is, like, it's bad for the environment. How bad is a couple... <laughs> of pa- like, a, like, it's it's like um, how many CVs are you handing out where you're mm-hmm. making an impact? How many CVs in total are everyone combined yeah. are handing out? It's actually going to make an impact. No. It, it's ludicrous as well because we're told that environmentally we should be moving away from plastics so we move to paper and then they're stopping the actual normal uses for paper yeah. to save the environment it, so it, now we don't use anything sense. there's nothing physical exists anymore yeah but we're so not, ill-informed yeah. about what is actually bad for the environment yeah. and i think a lot of these policies are made just with the simple idea that we need it, to just think use less physical things but yeah yeah i hate the idea that um that plastic we should move away from plastic Mm -hmm. when in reality we should just use plastic like not single use plastic Mm -hmm. but we should just have plastic and use it Mm -hmm. and forever it it lasts a long time yeah you should just keep using it you know what i mean it's so overused though i I mean like the idea that plastic's bad is not true Mm -hmm. it's the it's what's true is that plastic is bad after one use and you bin it that's yeah. when it's bad yeah i mean there's so many things in this room that are plastic that's that's like uh i oh know it's metal actually <laughs> but like there's so there are so many things in this room that are plastic but i'm not planning on getting rid of them ever mm-hmm. these are now mine i'm keeping them in yeah that, do you know what i mean mm-hmm. like that's plastic but that's very useful that's, yeah i've got plastic uh, speakers and things mm-hmm. but they're they're i'm they're being kept forever yeah but when it's like a plastic cup mm-hmm. and then you bin it that's mm-hmm. when plastic's bad yeah do you know what i mean mm-hmm. I, I just i feel like plastic's getting a pure hard time and it needs left alone there's so many other options it's, though it's just but there's nothing wrong with using plastic yeah forever yeah it, it, it's it, no different than just having any other material that you keep no, I, I, but i mean metal is more expensive yeah so if you want something cheap but still i mean plastic isn't that bad it's all right quality it's not as good as metal uh-huh. um don't get me wrong i'd prefer if everything was made of metal and glass mm-hmm. like glass bottles and yeah and everything was metal containers because they are actually useful uh like high quality durable products you know what i mean they're, mm-hmm. they're good mm-hmm. um but i just feel like plastic still gets a hard time you, you got a plastic flask that's gonna no, that'll last I don't a long think time. That actually is plastic. Oh, maybe it's not then. Doesn't I matter. Think it's, <laughs> what is that made from again? I don't know. Is it recycled Some of those something? Keep cups, yeah, because they they have that kind of like oatmeal looking. Oatmeal. Yeah, <laughs> it looks like. Do you know how like that color oatmeal? Yeah. With a little flex in it, I think it's made of like. I don't know. Maybe paper, actually. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. No idea. But I'm pretty sure it's not actually plastic. Fair enough. Um. Anyway, back on the subject of. Uh, whatever we're talking about <laughs> i have no idea about um, living off grid and stuff and living off foraging the grid. And yeah I, i'd like to live off the grid i mean yeah if, if i to describe my perfect life mm-hmm. it would be that i have a house that's all metal concrete and glass very mm-hmm. simplistic 
It has solar panels in the roof, so facing. I have an electric car mm-hmm. that I plug in, and I have a wee windmill. Maybe I have one of those uh, underground heating systems. Mm-hmm. I don't know how they work. I have a tunnel into like a little underground basement where that's effectively my fridge. <laughs> I don't need anything like 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 a big fridge that plugs in. Mm-hmm. Also, fridge that is a plastic that's not great because you can't really get rid of a fridge. When, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Once it breaks. Um, anyway, <laughs> that's like my perfect life off the grid that kind of thing um and then i just travel about and experience culture i take this podcast and set up with me and go meet people speak to people all across the world like uh, john wright shout out to john wright the foragers calendar um (laughs) sponsored by now i'm like um but do you know what i mean just do we do we need it's hard it's hard to um imagine everyone having the ability to do that and I think what's scary is that our world now is geared so that that is very hard to do. Geared. Like, as in you think it was deliberately... Well, not necessarily. I, I just think, it think that it's... <laughs> capitalism is all-encompassing. Mm. So, like, um, I heard a fact the other day about how 90% of all food sources and food, so, like, seeds and right, yeah. effort yeah, trees yeah. and all actual food products... Ninety percent of them are owned by three chemical companies. I oh, think yeah. it's I think it was three. And I the same that. the same companies that are creating chemical weapons. So if for talking sake, if they were to be altering foods or uh, tampering with them and goodness knows what they could do, really, if if you had control of all the global food source, um even if that was the case, if we wanted to move off grid and buy some seeds and start our own like kind of isolated way of living Mm -hmm. would we even be free from from the grasp that that this higher not higher power but as a higher grasp that these people have over us if they do have this said hold over us yeah i mean i'm not trying to like say i absolutely believe these things but yeah it is good to question obviously you you don't believe i don't believe necessarily that they're tampering with things but my conspiracist um, inkling tells me to just say of course they are like just the same as people believe that we don't need there's no scientific um proof that we need fluoride in our toothpaste and in our water but Mm -hmm. they keep it there you know and me and tom were talking about this the other day the idea that if you move if you go on holiday to a foreign country if you move you will need to acclimatize to the water and if you drink (laughs) it straight away you'll be sick you'll be violently ill you just shouldn't do it but these these um countries that like what what is the difference well, yeah, in their what water is, yeah. what do we do to our water we purify it but we also put fluoride in it so maybe these other uh countries just don't have additives in their yeah. water and they and don't not, want yeah, us to we're not talking about the places track. that have like dirty water systems we're talking mm-hmm. about like european countries yeah because we're talking like, about if we move to spain yeah, can you, we drink the water there and i was like and everywhere says no yeah. but then if you google it thoroughly enough the, like Spain's like yeah well yeah. of course we're a European country like, but our brainwashed minds tell us no I don't want to be can't. sick like we'll just buy bottled water it just seems so complicated like who one of them like there's you get two answers you get no you can't drink it and you get one that's like yeah you do you can just drink it mm-hmm. one of them has to be lying yeah they can't both be telling the truth well I've I've uh, come to realize that there's so many people around the world that believe this so firmly that they're putting something in the water which honestly i used to laugh at conspiracies like this and now i'm just like you know i don't know anything like i'm open to any idea Um, and i'm not trusting anything (laughs) um but these people will collect their own rainwater and collect their own stream water and then boil it in their houses and that's all they will drink yeah although there's you know what the world's like all the water that has ever been used is in circulation gets used again, you know? So it's yeah. probably all contaminated at this point, but... Um, <laughs> I mean, yes, but... The, it's like, not getting additives put in, I can. No, it's, it's not that. It's that the, the world... I mean, it almost does seem like it is designed. Because a lot of things make a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. The water does come quite to quite a clean point once it's been through the system, once it's been evaporated and then the clouds have rained it back out and, and whatnot and so on and so forth. And it 
comes down the mountains, it becomes quite clean. Yeah. Super clean. Yeah. So it does seem like that if water becomes contaminated, nature is designed so that it becomes clean again at one mm-hmm. point. And how long do it's like how common I'm not I don't know any facts about this, but how common do you think it was back in the days for people to get diseases through the water? Like obviously now we get um, typhoid and cholera if that's water based, but um like I think that's what, what they tell us, like they purify the water to stop us getting illnesses. Yeah. And yeah, now that now because the world is so populated, these illnesses are prevalent and possibly prevalent in the water. But mm. I don't know. That's before a good that, did people really die from drinking bad water? Like even if there's a dead animal I, upstream, would they die well, from drinking that? I'm gonna guess no, but yes, they probably got a in lot a of diseases way. in cities. Right. Yeah. When when places become very like, congregated, a lot of people live in the same place and they piled on top of each other. They probably got a lot of diseases then. Mm-hmm. But I mean, people who lived in cottages and farmland and, and the countryside, mm. they they probably were never getting diseases from water. I think we've evolved into s- much more weak beings. Oh, like, yeah. Like, we used to have such a immunity for things and... We're um, definitely weaker, th- like... W- Instead of us yeah, evolving no. as humans, we're changing the world around us so that we don't need to evolve. Well, and it's making us weaker. That, <laughs> what's that thing called that exists in like Hindu or, or Buddhist? Or I think it's Hindu culture, and it's like there's like different periods of life. Hindu is a religion. Hinduism. Yeah, I mean, oh, okay. it has a culture. <laughs> um, and it's so like there's like a, there like at one point in time people would uh, talk. Mm-hmm and chant and sing mm-hmm. and then write things down mm-hmm. i don't know what this is i'm, I'm really not like I'm, this is not at all <laughs> any area <laughs> that i understand yes point. i i i just remember reading it somewhere or something mm-hmm. but i mean it's definitely true that at one point people just didn't write things down they told stories mm-hmm. i mean a, bit, a great example would be like um uh homer's uh odyssey, odyssey. that was in existence for however many years mm-hmm. without ever being written down mm. oh yeah yeah okay, so it was just yeah. told it was just it was just spoken at like amphitheaters yeah, and things they just told actually. they yeah. just told each other the story mm-hmm. and then at one point in history someone wrote it down that's why yeah. we don't really know who wrote it homer was probably a made-up guy or whatever right. and homer's like maybe a translated word for like the speaker is it, or the, the, same, is it the same with the Iliad? yep yeah yeah so that what? existed for I, I, honestly it was like hundreds of years yeah before it was ever written down uh-huh. um so yeah the people would just remember it mm-hmm. they would just remember the story and it kind of like has a chant to it and uh, like it's like a really really long story mm-hmm. uh, i read that during lockdown well i actually I, I bought it as a what's that called when you listen to it um like an audiobook yeah because i you're like I wanted to experience it the way that people would have experienced it then. Aww. I didn't want to like read it because people wouldn't have read it. That's such they a good They would have idea. heard it from other people. So I, I bought the audiobook and listened to it. Chat, I might take your advice on that. Yeah. I, do that. I, I think I can like send you. I don't know yes. how that works. Anyway, um, but it was brilliant. It was really interesting. Uh, I was like, it's all about gods and whatever. And it's mm-hmm. all quite exciting and cool. Yeah. Um, but that story, I, I couldn't recite any story. Mm-hmm. None. I, yeah. I couldn't even recite a paragraph after reading it. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I have no but memory for that. that's because there's so much stuff in our brains now. But then, I, I guess no, back then... They had way more stuff in their brains. Think? We're full of gumph, and I don't even think we're full of as much gumph as they would have been full of. I think we probably use a percent, one percent of the, of the uh, storage capacity of our brain yeah. that they would have used... Which is probably point one percent of what we actually because they're putting stuff in the water so that we can use right. all of our brain. <laughs> that's why. Um, I, I mean, I'm not. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is that at one point people did just remember things, mm-hmm. and now we're at a point where we're actually just significantly so intellectually dumb. weaker. Yeah. We don't remember things. Yeah. I'm just, terrible for it. Like, what am I like with remembering stuff? Uh, you're you're just ahead of your like you're ahead of the curve. Uh, we're going to get more like you every day. <laughs> People are going to remember things less and less. It terrifies and I, me. It really I, does. But what's, I, I would like to know the reason for it. And no one knows the reason no. for it. But we know that... I, I actually think as that... See, I, it's either that we are creating tools around us 
so we don't need to work as hard. So yeah. we're creating things like phones it's that like remember for us. It's like putting on glasses so that your eyes can get lazy and they get yes, worse. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but the question is, are we getting worse so we build the technology to help us or are we building the technology to help us which and makes us worse? worse? I think it's that, that yeah. other way, yeah. It probably is just a... We've done what's the What's the word? A snake that eats its own tail? Uh, Ouroboros or whatever? Uh, yeah, Ouroboros. Um, that's what it feels <laughs> like. It's, it's never ending. And we're, we're stuck in this infinite yep. cycle of making things worse. Um, and we're going to get to like a boiling point where we're just a bean that's just a brain <laughs> that sits in a jar. If we get there, because it. apparently um, Andromeda has col- started colliding with yes. the Milky Way, it's made contact. Yeah. And the scientists don't know what it means. They don't know what it means. Yep. And it wasn't expected to happen for lots of years from now <laughs> and it's just, it's just happened yeah. and they were like oh that thing just happened just shows you know. how unpredictable life is yeah um we have no as far as i know nowhere on earth has a sort of like deterrent or system in place to stop meteors from hitting us yeah that's crazy and what did you not tell me the other day that a meteor like skimmed past earth and it entered the atmosphere or something or did it one one or just uh, past that landed atmosphere? in russia a few years ago it actually hit russia but no that you were talking about like another one it was huge and it went right past oh, earth. Oh, they yeah. didn't even see they it didn't coming see it, yeah. they didn't even detect one, yeah. it yeah one just kind of like passed by i don't know how dangerous that was i don't know mm. if it actually affected us at all it um, very rarely happens but that one closely. Uh, a few years ago, one actually just hit into Russia. They didn't know what was going to happen and created a sonic boom, destroyed all the windows. It must have been tiny, like absolutely tiny. Uh, I think when it, like, I, I, there's photos of it, um, but it like weighed a ridiculous amount because it was all these like heavy, heavy metals and things. Mm-hmm. Uh, even though it was, it was quite small when it was kind of like recovered. Yeah. Um, I bet that's worth a fortune. Here, I was just thinking do you know what, I, what just popped into my head? Like, it's not even a, it's just a thought, right? See how we have, like, loads of space junk, like, everything. Satellites and things. Yeah. Yeah. Like, imagine we found another planet and we could see all their space junk. Nah. Imagine one day we just started putting nah. all our rubbish out into the atmosphere. Or, like, in beyond the atmosphere. And aliens found us and they just saw, like, bikes floating about, and like, rotating around yeah. the Earth. I think um, <laughs> if we... If we ever came across another life form, yeah, that life form is going to be way better than us. Yeah, but they would maybe still have space junk. Like if they had evolved past us, then they would have evolved past that. Unless they like started clearing it all. They would have, yeah. Mm, Fair enough. Fair enough. I think that was a funny thought. Like, (laughs) do you know it's quite hard to think about, right? So, like, obviously we have this idea that we don't know how other species would exist, Mm -hmm. and. The idea of like, would another species be able to like even understand their existence? Yeah. Or would we really understand their existence? Maybe they're around us right now. That whole thought, like, yeah. how do we know we're not just like on the motorway of um alien whatever? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Uh-huh. But then, if we're all carbon species, we're all we're all basically just blobs of carbon, mm-hmm. and everything in the, the entire universe is just blobs of carbon. And they're probably going to be quite similar to us because mm-hmm. they they have the same chemicals. Yeah, if they exist in our realm, then they will. We will probably be able to comprehend them. But yeah. it's if they exist in another plane of existence, of existence. like in f- the fourth dimension, then the would fifth, we six, understand? Seven, eight, nine, yeah, ten. however many there are, then we might not be able to comprehend it because we can't even comprehend what the four, the fourth dimension would look like. Yeah. Although we should we should um, talk about our friend what Wait, he was yeah. explaining that he experienced when he was younger i just had a, a thought there right before oh, okay, you got right. right? <laughs> um, i just had a, a, just a side thought of we are like we are uh three-dimensional mm-hmm. creatures yeah that use things like sound yeah to to communicate yeah how great would a story be if someone could write it uh, uh, like in a really sort of like in a good way that actually sort of anthropomorphizes the idea that I'm trying to say, but that there's a sound, mm-hmm. there's a living species of sound that use physical objects to communicate. Like mm. they use physicality to communicate. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? They're very cool. Or like there's a, there's smells. Well, yeah, I guess, I guess it's fair to um, 
believe that in the third dimension we have however many senses. Yeah. Well, supposedly five. But nah, that's not. We've that's got not. way more, but in higher dimensions they have hundreds. You know, like that's totally fair to believe. Yeah. Senses I mean, that we can't even understand. Are you implying that like there's like there's senses that we can't access? Humans can't access. Yeah, like we don't even know they're there, probably. Um Yeah, okay. Do you wanna talk about um Owen's dream yeah. when he was younger? <laughs> so as we were talking Should about we like <laughs> we we can't even explain or understand the fourth dimension. So we're at a friend's house the other night and he was explaining this thing that he would just, have when yeah, he was younger. Just a side note, we know nothing about anything. Don't don't take any of our information and think we're like we know anything. We oh just, yeah we yeah, just like yeah. talking about stuff just put a disclaimer yeah. at the start we are idiots i mean uh, yeah <laughs> you should just take it for granted that we're just idiots yeah. and we just like talking about stuff and yeah. we're all we're really interested by stuff yeah but we don't understand any of it yeah not everything i say i firmly believe yeah. or yeah we're just saying I just put stuff. stuff out we're just there, saying yeah. it like trying i'm trying life not to filter stuff. myself yeah or anything um but also we should also just quickly state it's so, like for those who don't understand one dimension is basically like a line. This is the simplest way of describing mm-hmm. it. It's a line. There's not much like depth or meaning to it. It's just a line. Two dimensions. Like you're is um, like, wait, wait, wait. so like if you're uh, with the likeness to like a Tamagotchi pet, they just live in. Well, wouldn't that be? Or wait, do they be, live in two D? Yeah, a Tamagotchi pet would live in two D. Oh, because so they like can that's go like up. Playing Mario. Right. Okay, very right. Like uh, Mario, it's a platformer. It's yeah. like they can only move left, right, up, down. Yep. That's it. They have okay, the so y axis and the and the x axis. That's it. That's the two two. That's the second dimension. That's two mm-hmm. dimensions. Mm-hmm. Three dimensions. What we live in, we can go forward, back, There's left, depth. right, up, down. Everything we have. Of uh, sort of like three dimensional sound and space, um, and we can run about and exist mm-hmm. and everything. The way the every everything that you look around and experience is three dimensions. Yeah. Um, but then four dimensions becomes a bit more complicated, and it's hard yeah. for the human brain to even comprehend. There's Obviously, a... I can't comprehend, but I've I've I'm fascinated by it. I've yeah. read a lot about it. There's a lot of like ideas that the there's people that can access the fourth dimension through consciousness and consciousness may all exist plane. yeah well yeah it's it's complicated a lot of it's up in the air because we don't know what it is scientists yeah. don't know what it is but Phys- we don't know if it even study. exists do we if really I mean, do we i think i think it's most mathematicians argue that okay. yes it absolutely yeah. exists but then who do you want to believe um yeah a lot of like physicists and mathematicians argue yes the the fourth dimension is absolutely real mm-hmm. um but they don't know where it is or what it is and it's just the idea that maybe things can simultaneously exist uh-huh. in two different states or maybe multiple different states mm-hmm. um and but then there's like uh monks that live in the himalayas who meditate and they believe that consciousness is the fourth dimension consciousness mm-hmm. is an like a gateway or, or an access point or a plane in which you can experience again multiple different states mm-hmm. which doesn't mean mean you're personally it can be interpreted multiple, yeah different exactly ways. but it's a full the, i guess the full idea is that there are like a fundamental point to the fourth dimension is that things can exist in multiple positions or multiple states mm-hmm. simultaneously yeah. and there's a lot, a lot of connectedness to a it. lot of people see it as a place where you can go but i think it's it's all yeah. around us it's, yep. it exists yeah. in everything it's just that we can't see it i think the so idea that that it's a place you can go is like a layman's yeah. kind of term for it there's it's a theory to, to like put it in simpler like terms there's a theory that obviously in our 3d world our shadows are in 2d so like if our shadow reflected in a wall the shadow is 3d but in a 4d world maybe we are the shadow so the th- right, we have right. 3d we are the 3d shadow of the 4d world right i can't like it's another way I've to understand it or another way to interpret it that's quite fascinating yeah do you want to tell the story now yeah so <laughs> we were talking about strange dreams that we've had because they're the topic of dreams we should do a podcast on dreams yeah. because pff, we can absolutely um talk about that yeah. all day but um our friend awesome. owen was telling us 
that he experienced this thing called the Alice in Wonderland complex or something when he was younger. So he looked it up in later years um, only to realise that he was experiencing like a phenomenon when he was younger. Um, I'm not going to remember all this story. But I can't he remember what the Alice in Wonderland aspect of it was. I think it was just crazy crazy worlds oh, is it and big and small things maybe uh, I don't know. remember so he was he was having this recurring dream when he was younger and basically he would go into this strange panicked state and he would be staring at something and there would be a clock a huge clock ahead of him and a small clock in front of him both in like um level to his eyes view yeah. And they would like pulsate and they would be close and far, big and small, all at the same time. Yeah. So he could almost see through things. He was just experiencing Multiple both objects the at the same time. And we, me and Tom were both instantly like, I wonder if that's what the fourth dimension is like. Oh yeah, well you I'd already can read perceive, before, You can perceive more than yeah. one thing and more than one place. Yeah. basically just perceive lots of things at the same yeah. time yeah as soon as he said I'd, I'd already read like a lot about how people will like, have experienced like the perception of the fourth dimension mm-hmm. uh while asleep but then it's not really when they're asleep though it's more like when they're they're like in a state so like uh the reason i came across it is because i read that salvador dali would put himself into these like hypnotic mm-hmm. states where yeah. he was conscious and, and and awake but he was so delirious that he could start experiencing things that don't really make sense to our mm-hmm. physical world mm-hmm. um and that's what inspired a lot of his paintings and things where he would which is why time is so like prevalent in all his work because yeah. like what is time and and like he was experiencing multiple different points in time simultaneously or that's yeah. what he thought he was experiencing yeah. which is such an interesting thought and i love that he painted about it our little brains can only feel yeah. and see so much <laughs> i i disagree i think our brains are way more powerful than we can ever imagine why, why would they have such like who worked out that there is such huge capacity to our brains and who worked out that we're only accessing a little bit and why why would we only be accessing a little bit um, is it just because we're evol- we're still evolving I, well, no, clearly I, we're still evolving do you know how like apes when they started walking and then they made tools and then they started um eating meat and fish and so their brains expanded and they started using more we've not really gotten very far since the whole Oh, now we've got protein. Now our brains are a bit bigger. What's next? Well, we need to. Surely there is potential to get I, the full again, capacity. Do you not think we'll maybe regress at one point? Yeah, we we're limiting ourselves. Like a, the sentient boom, and we experienced everything. We were all connected. Yeah, we all had this sort of like interconnected, compassionate mm-hmm. existence. We all yeah. we all understood each other. We could. I'm not going as far as like saying we could communicate without speaking, but we probably to a degree could communicate without speaking. I mean, we do it now all the time. We mm-hmm. communicate without any sort of physical or or, or audible gestures. Um, but what I was going to say is that if a, if a computer is running like, I don't know, the calculator app, mm-hmm. it's, hard, it's using tiny, tiny, tiny little percent of the processor. Mm-hmm. But if you're running... I don't know, three calculators, you had a hundred tabs open, mm-hmm. you were recording a podcast and you were watching a movie on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Then the processor's going a bit harder. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But then if you go even further and you're rendering a graphic and you're you're doing this and that and really you've got thirty different applications open and they're all running full pill and they're that processor's going really hard. Mm-hmm. So right now I feel like existing it's like using the processor just a tiny little bit. Yeah. Just in fact, you're probably you're on standby. You're not even really using it. It's just there. Mm-hmm. And then when you're like thinking about I don't know an equation, then you're using the processor a bit harder. Yeah. And then when you're doing, when you're accessing different planes of existence, yeah. then that's when you're putting your brain to the see, the full. This is the thing. I think like we see our our evolution in the wrong way. So, a lot of people think that it's gonna we're gonna evolve through. AI and we're going to become like half robots and that technology is going to help us evolve but I think that real human evolution 
is all about accessing more of our brain and so it's to do with consciousness and it's to do with having some kind of I think the next step in our evolution is a spiritual awakening I really do and I think it is people so many young people are so spiritual now I had never been spiritual before but I really I would say that I'm a very spiritual person now because I fully believe that we're on the tip of something like um the last awakening was at the time of the Egyptians and the Greeks and they they created so many wonderful things and did so many things that to this day we don't understand how they did it at that time but I think it's because they they knew something and we've totally been brainwashed and we've regressed from that point we went through the middle ages where everything was terrible it went from it went from a perfect system to the worst human suffering that the world has seen people just living in squalor you know and now we're kind of recovered but we're not at that sweet spot yet we're not in that golden age and I think we're on the verge of it and people are people are becoming aware of things like the 4d and people are becoming aware of ideas that we hadn't really been exposed to before yeah yeah i mean i get what you're saying i'm on the fence about that i don't know like um i think maybe it's the the terminology like a yeah. spiritual awakening yeah. sounds so um like we don't exist in in the world of spiritual awakening i mean uh, like it seems like we've it's not like it's just people finding more yeah um like people what's the word like accessing more of their brain yes but w- w- like you're saying spiritual awakening what is what is spirit becoming what is the spirit? becoming conscious of the 4d i think that's what yeah, i mean that's, and that's a, a different statement because yeah that is a different statement consciousness mm-hmm. is something that i mean is debatable but it's highly studied and mm-hmm. like i mean the idea of being conscious exists but what is consciousness we don't know um and four dimensions, we, we I mean, you could kind of say that it exists. Mm-hmm. You, again, we don't know if it exists, but it's highly debated, but most people would So do you, do you not believe that there's more than we think? I think there's more than we think. I just don't think that. I think that the connotations of becoming conscious of the fourth dimension and saying uh, a spiritual awakening mm-hmm. are different. I think the yeah. connotations of either, those two yeah. statements are I guess different. it's just different interpretations though, isn't it? Yeah. Because people practice these ideas in a different way, which is absolutely fine. I, f- I can... Um, so res- I, j- I think I just resonate more with the idea that we're having an awakening. But, yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. I mean, I don't know. It's what's kind going of new on. world order stuff as well, which yeah. if I guess that comes into play if you believe that we are being held back from the fourth dimension by governments and government bodies, and they don't want us to. I mean, they've they've um, got us hooked on our phones so that we're not thinking about things, and yeah, there's lot there's lots of ways where the government restrict us from experiencing things beyond our understanding like mushrooms for example they're natural like tom talks us all the time yeah. how nobody's ever overdosed from mushrooms well, yeah, so, like, yeah you can't, nobody's ever can't overdose on mushrooms you yeah. can't you can't um you like the drugs that are illegal like that I, by the way i'm not saying everyone should go out try mushrooms and whatever what i'm saying is that there is a very weird, and you can't disagree, no one can even disagree with us rationally, there is a weird hatred towards certain drugs mm-hmm. for no good reason. Yeah. People seem to dislike cannabis and mushrooms because they're illegal, but then will go get drunk every mm-hmm. weekend yeah. on alcohol. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying one's better than the other, in fact, yes, well, I am. I'm coffee saying, is coffee is a drug, but that's legal. Another, that's yeah. legal because it keeps us moving keeps us and working. it keeps us working. It keeps yeah. us robots. So I I think that coffee. I mean, this is like if we look at this logically, mm-hmm. it makes no sense that they make one illegal that mm-hmm. doesn't hurt anyone or even the user, and the other one is legal mm-hmm. and people 
hurt each other all the time on it. People do stupid stuff. Mm-hmm. People kill themselves on it. Alcohol is so dangerous. Mm-hmm. And it's it's literally poisoning mm-hmm. the bloodstream. It's bizarre. It also fits into this idea of like free roaming that I was talking about earlier. Like we're told where we can and can't go. We're told that we're not allowed to pick a mushroom out of our garden and eat it. Yeah. We're told that we can't grow a plant and smoke it. Yeah. Doesn't make any sense. (laughs) It's it's like, how can people decide these things? There is a war on plants and it makes no sense. Plants. That doesn't make any sense. Anyway, the whole idea is that when people take mushrooms or take LSD, whatever it is, they, uh, like, have you obviously heard about that whole thing where people take it and they hear a voice in their head and it says, you found us. Oh, yeah. Thing, well, which no, is that's, a, a, that's a very specific drug, apparently. Oh, that's okay. A, yeah, that's not just but any But most people that are on psychedelics like that, but yeah, whether it's tripping out like or not they have experience. an out of body experience they have an experience that they can't explain yep. when they come back to it's kind of like dreams when we come back to reality we can't really comprehend or quite understand what was going on but at the time it seemed so normal it seemed to make sense yeah but when our rational human minds try and make sense of it we lose grip of it and we can't remember it as clearly anymore yeah. i mean it's it's really strange to think right so like if we if this is our perspective on life, we all kind of have the same sort of perspective. We all see the same way and we hear the same way and all that yeah. kind of stuff. And then on alcohol, we all get drunk and we all experience that the same way. And we can all describe it. We all know what being drunk's like and yeah. then all that kind of stuff and then so on and so forth. And then when you get to one where it's like taking mushrooms, where everyone that describes it is like, it's nothing like anyone has ever experienced yeah. other than when taking mushrooms. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can't replicate that, that, that everyone that's ever spoken about it, it's like, it's it's not like anything that's ever existed in our realm Mm. it is a whole new cognitive experience that's the one that's illegal (laughs) (laughs) but it's because they're scared of it they're scared that people access this i think i mean yeah i'm i guess you could look at it like this like coffee it keeps you working right Mm. we all agree that coffee is pretty much it's legal because it keeps us working I think they're money. also draining the brains. Yeah, pro- I mean, maybe I don't know. I th- I don't know. I think coffee could be used in very beneficial ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's like, yeah, it keeps you working, and uh, it, I don't know. It's it's addictive, so they get good tax money mm. on it, all that stuff. I don't mm. know how it works, right? But probably it just keeps us working. And at the weekends, we have those two days of freedom, so then you get drunk. So you're experiencing two different types of drugs. You're experiencing one to keep you working, and then one to like let off some steam and then you just repeat that until you die it's a crazy thought that beverages control so many people's lives yeah. <laughs> but then if you have something that takes you out of that system that system of rep- repetition of working and then that two days of freedom working that two days yeah. of freedom and then there's one that's like oh no wait there's actually more none to of life. this matters yeah, <laughs> you can oh like this 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 drug is telling you oh all you need to do is eat sleep and be happy yeah that people are like, what? Yeah. How how dare you even have such a like abomination of an idea to think that all you need to do is eat, sleep, and be happy? But that's all you need to do. Do you know how this is like an age of everything being normalized? Like lots of things, normalize this, normalize that. One thing I'm very happy about being normalized is this um, new attitudes towards the daily grind like yeah, <laughs> if you know what i mean people hate work now yeah and i've i've felt like this for a long time ever since i realized that horrible concept that people just spend their lives working and doing nothing <laughs> and the more that um the more people that end up in a line of work the more people our age obviously we were brought up being told that we can do anything yeah in our parents' generation, they were brought up being told, you want to be a lawyer, you want to be a doctor, like, go after that, and that's success. And having a job is stability, and that's success. But we've been told we can do anything. Yeah. So when we come to the reality that, no, we're actually still stuck in this system of having to work, so many young people now are having crises. They're having existential crises because the thought of that is just... Um, debilitating it's yeah. horrible and so many people are so against it now 
and um yeah it just it's I'm so glad that that's something that's been normalized that it's actually a horrible thing it's um here's not a, a way to live here's a thought right so for a long period of time people oh, sorry can I just say I, th- I think you could also consider that an awakening because people are, are yeah, seeing okay. beyond this system well, this actually makes sense I guess yeah. to what I'm about to say mm-hmm. so people for the longest time worked yep. to make money mm-hmm. so they could eat right or people worked to live yeah yeah that's what I mean to eat and yeah. then have a, a, to, to survive all time, yeah. right that makes sense mm-hmm. um, now maybe I'm not saying we're getting a point where you don't need to work to eat but a lot of people have alternative uh, places to go to make money. Mm-hmm. So then they, they don't need to go to that nine to five job and they have time to contemplate on what's actually going on. Yeah. And I think a lot of people are, are becoming aware of the fact that we are animals. Yeah. We are just animals and all animals need to do, like the, the basic instinct, <laughs> every single animal, they're not even trying to uh, eat and sleep to survive. They're trying to survive so they can reproduce. Uh-huh. And our basic instinct is to reproduce. And we've got to a weird point where we're actually kind of past the idea of trying to survive to reproduce. We're trying to survive because we are probably the only truly sentient things alive that mm-hmm. we know of. Mm-hmm. Truly sentient in the sense that we don't just, we're not just alive to reproduce, we're alive to question we're alive to contemplate we're alive to make art and to make mm-hmm. like cuisine and culture <laughs> and we we, yeah. we contemplate things like why are we here mm-hmm. not just like how do i live but why am i here yeah how did i get here yeah and what is the entire purpose of all of this like we're in a really really strange position mm-hmm. in comparison to everything else that we consider living yeah like I doubt that plants are really questioning that and I even more so doubt that animals out with humans are questioning that. I think maybe plants are probably a wee bit more humans sentient Humans are just not animals. content and that's a good thing. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Cows are, cows are pretty content just chill. Well, to my knowledge, cows are pretty content just sitting there chilling, eating grass. I think we'd probably be better off if, uh, if we could remove we're the sentience unaware. of yeah. humanity. I yeah. think we'd honestly be better off yeah. because we'd, we'd be back to the... The simplistic times of just roaming. But it's so much more exciting being human. (laughs) Uh, I don't know, man. My cat sits there and he he looks (laughs) like he's having the time of his life, sleeping 16 hours a day or whatever. Yeah. Um, we're, we're, We're more than an hour here, Lucy. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you want to wrap it up? Should we wrap it up? I think we should probably wrap it up. I think we could definitely split this into like a little, um, Weekly, weekly Tom and Lucy chats. Yeah, there, there's not really any encompassing theme here. Like, we could just, just call stuff. this rambling. Stuff and things, maybe. Deep stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Using what little capacity of the brains we can <laughs> access <Yeah. laughs> to talk about things. Um, before we, we do the wrap this up, um, what's, what's going on in life? What are you doing? Ugh. Don't know. We're just waiting to get the go-ahead to move to Spain. We're trying to do it as soon as possible because we just want to be living in the sun yeah. in a new place, experiencing new things. Yeah. We want to move in together. Yeah. Um, Love the good life. Yeah. We're ju- and oh, and tomorrow we're um, doing a thing. A thing. Yeah, we're going on an adventure tomorrow. Going on an adventure. Yeah. And if you wanna wanna hear more about this adventure, check out. Uh, my YouTube channel, Tom Gibson. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Good plug in there. I did that very smoothly. I think. What's crazy is how many people. So, Tom left his job maybe a few months ago. He'd been working. A nah, month. A month, oh, month ago. Um, he'd been working to save up to move to Spain. And I also stopped working at my job. So. Uh, no that's not what I was going to say I was going to say <laughs> <laughs> loads of other people we know have also recently quit their jobs or lost their jobs or whatever 
people so many people are moving away from their jobs right now as yeah. if like i think um lockdown has opened up a lot of people's perspectives yeah. on things and people are thinking oh my god what am i doing why am i going to this place every day that i don't care about and i'm getting yeah. no reward from i'm gonna go out and just do things and so many people have spoken to us like we went on a little road trip with their friends yeah. the other day just spontaneously out of the yeah. blue because they're not working anymore and, and because that's like, what you should do you should just really go is. live we had life the best time um, we didn't understand we didn't, that lots didn't of people that much money no we didn't wasn't expensive. lots of people need money to survive lots i understand that the system needs to change though I because mean, people only, shouldn't uh, people don't need to be working yep. to survive we've got enough things in this world to keep us all alive yep exactly it's like th- we have a um five day nearly six day work week my mum works six, mostly six days a week that's but then in other countries they have like a three day work week and it works out absolutely fine. Do we even they're need just, a work week? They're at this paying point? us so little to work so much when they could easily change things about and they could make food cheaper and they could Universal have us on a rotating system. Yeah, there's so many ways to do things. We're just do- we're tackling problems at the complete wrong yeah. in the complete wrong way. It's like to try and curve <laughs> climate change that they all of a sudden care about so much they're no. lowering the motorway speed limits in the uk to 60 and it's like uh, that is the most minuscule i, I it won't make rubbish a thing that cars you can do are to now help designed things. to handle those it's speeds. just control there it, it's just more control measures under the guise of of helping and it's like um the, the, think how much money they're going to make in fining people <laughs> because they forget that you can only do 60 in the motorway that yeah well, so many roads around here have become 20s instead of 30s, mm-hmm. and now they're going to change the 70s to 60s. And that's that's just money making, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's just money making. And also, if you think about it, like in a, in a way of like people living their life, mm-hmm. it's actually really, really problematic. It's so once, detrimental. Once people go back to work, they're like they, them commuting every day it'll have to, they'll have longer. to wake up sooner yeah exactly and it's just Life a slow so draining so process people. on people's mental stability it's, it's such just a simple change they've made such a simple yeah. change that doesn't actually seem as drastic as it is but it really 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 is yeah. because it's just completely flipped a lot of people's life upside down yeah where well not no that it's not flipped people's lives upside down it's meant that they have to wake up a slight bit sooner and it's going to push them over the edge it's it's yeah. like how well, that, far exactly, can you yeah. push people exactly. um, it's not flipped any like they've been flipping the lives upside down very very slowly and they're st- still spinning them around there's there's actually something i want to finish on Mm -hmm. a a quick quick couple of things i want to say um and it's these are these are two things that my parents always told me when i was growing up right um and while i'm saying mind you want to think of one of you want to say a nice ending note oh okay so (laughs) one is that my my parents always told me that they don't know anything they don't they don't they're not like superior to me or anyone else um, they're winging it as much as I am and I, I don't think I appreciated that information as much as I do now because I realise we're all just winging it. We're all, every human is on the same boat and we don't know where we're going and we always have these same questions of what's going on, what we're doing, where are we going to end up uh, and am I going to be, am I going to be in a position where I'm going to be happy? I mean, I'm happy right now. I'm quite happy. I, I love life but what I mean is Am I always going to be like this? Or am I going to be stuck in a job that's going to make me sad? And then that takes me to the second part of that is that they always also taught me, go and do whatever you want to go do. Whatever it is, go do it. Mm-hmm. Because don't go look for stability and don't go look for like a safety net of whatever and blah, blah. Just go do it. Go mm-hmm. do it because you'll figure out a way to get back out of it if you mess up. Um, and a perfect example of this that that I've ca- I came across the other day when I, someone else had the same piece of advice was that their dad was like, I don't know, he became an accountant or something, I don't know what it was, right? Or a lawyer. And he was like, that's a stable job, so I'm going to work at this firm, I'm going to be like a, like a lawyer or accountant or whatever it was, and I'm going to be safe because everybody's going to need those. And then he'd been working in this firm for however long, and then they just laid him off. They just fired him because he couldn't afford it. Mm-hmm. So he just fired him and a bunch of other people and he just lost his job and he couldn't afford it and he could, like, no one wanted a, 
this old guy to come into their their jo- their business now, um, because he was like he had too many qualifications, so he'd be coming in as like a higher end kind of guy, and it'd be too mm-hmm. expensive bringing on when they could just bring on new students leave, uh, leaving university, and it'd be much cheaper. And then they could train them up for their way of working and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So much, that guy was just ruined. For I life. much prefer the idea of having control of your own successes and yeah. failures rather than someone else being in complete control yeah, of it. Exactly. And then, but even at the, I, I, I sometimes don't even mind if someone else is taking taking control mm-hmm. as long as I'm happy yeah. doing what I'm yeah, doing. Yeah. That guy wasn't even happy. Yeah. He was whatever he was, like an accountant. Just say mm-hmm. he was an accountant. He wasn't happy, but he knew he had security and he knew he could provide for his family. But the mm. problem is, he then didn't have, he security, didn't have security and he couldn't provide for his family. The world so, is ever-changing. Yeah, Nothing is certain. Maybe the, the main piece of advice is do not, do not rely on anyone. Just mm-hmm. rely on yourself. Yeah. Have people you trust, have people that, you, that are there for you, but never rely on anyone. Always, always be uh, vigilant. Always like, prep yourself. Always be ready. To, and and most importantly, go and do what you want to go to. Yeah. Do you have a? I have, I have a very similar closing message. Okay. Um, I was gonna say, don't trust anything. <laughs> don't even trust me telling you to not trust anything. <laughs> That's good. Don't trust that the people shouting in the street that the world's gonna end are the crazy ones because we don't know anything. Don't trust anything. We have our own unique minds and consciousnesses and thought processes so that we can come to our own conclusions i feel i was growing up that um i do not see things the same way as my parents and so many people for so long took after their parents ideas um and i'm it doesn't mean that i'm always going to be right like parents yeah my parents have proven that they've been right a lot of times but i've proven that i've been right a lot of times what's important is that you do think for yourself and you experience things and you you can change your ideas, you can change your opinions on things when new information is received, um, which is another thing that's being normalised. Um, but yeah, just don't don't trust anything. Don't trust that we've been to the moon. Don't trust that the, I don't know, don't trust that religious people are naive. Don't trust anything. Just think for yourself. It's okay if you're wrong, yep. but don't, don't yeah. follow like a sheep don't trust uh, don't take anyone's word for his gospel yeah to just decide for yourself yeah. and live your own life yeah um, the worst thing that could happen to this world which is already taken over essentially is conformity yeah. just everyone doing the same thing living a mundane we need to move life. away from that thank you for listening <laughs> uh godspeed namaste <laughs> have a good one uh go go kill it go do what you want go forage I hope, I hope you've enjoyed this yeah go go try <laughs> get pick some, some berries brambles. but be very wise read a good book on it try and identify what you're you're going to pick because it is quite dangerous sometimes there are some things that will kill you not everything no there's three thousand different species of mushroom in the uk and only 20 will actually kill <laughs> you and even over those 20 it's quite hard to kill yourself with them so i mean you could give it a bash but i'd be <laughs> careful uh that was my words i'm not taking any uh, responsibility for anyone that hurts themselves while foraging have a good day good <laughs> Bye, I love you. Bye.